So let's talk about a very important aspect that was not known to the European researchers but which Dr. Karim has now made public. That there is a hidden key to balancing the energy in any living energy system. Could be a human being, could be an animal, could be a plant, could be the environment. It could be a building or a space. The hidden key to this are in fact three specific energy qualities which in biogeometry are referred to as the biogeometry three or simply as the BG3. These three energy qualities balance energy in all living systems. Now these three energies are manifestations vibrationally in our physical world that are direct links to forces in higher worlds. So in a sense we could say that these are three divine energies. The first is a spiritual carrier wave connecting spirit and matter. Now this was the only one of the three that was identified by the European researchers. It's the one that we've just described to you a moment ago. The Europeans did find this one, but they did not know about the other two. The second is what in the original Arabic and hieroglyphic languages we would translate into English as being the spiritual light or the atmosphere of the angels. And the third is what technically is known as the higher harmonic of gold, which is a golden radiance from the plane of divine wisdom, which enhances human consciousness and vitalizes the human immune system. Now let's just mention a little bit about the background of these three energies. Because as I said before, in the biogeometry training, the first two days are devoted to giving an overview of knowledge such as this and understanding the way that the Egyptians understand these subtle realities. The background of these three energies, they can be found in all sacred power spots on Earth. It doesn't matter what the tradition is that is present at that location on the planet. If you go to any of their sacred power spots, you will find when you test it that these three energies are present in the sacred power spot. But the same thing is true in the human energy body. The sacred power spots in the human energy body also have these three specific energy qualities. So we find them in the chakras, the joints, acupuncture points, even in the cells of the human body, and even in genetic structures in the human body. You test these and you find these three energies. So these three energies are not something in the biogeometry system that we are adding to a living energy system from the outside in an artificial manner. Rather, they are already the essence that nature has provided to living energy systems so their energy is balanced and healthy. It is simply that in Dr. Kareem's work in biogeometry, for the first time we have been able to make clear exactly what these energies are and give people practical ways to be able to detect them and to be able to manifest them because we can manifest these three energies through either design principles or through direct spiritual connection. Now the first of these three energies, I'm just going to give you a, a quick wrap up again of the three because we went through them very quickly. The first one is the spiritual carrier wave. The spiritual carrier wave as I mentioned before, was identified by the Europeans who called it negative green for reasons that we will describe in the foundation training. It's also linked to particular shapes or designs. For instance, the form of the dome and the hemisphere that we mentioned before. Also, certain types of design that have seven objects or seven-fold design to them. In other words, there's an aspect of the design that is repeated seven times. You can actually create an emanation of this energy from that design using the quality of the number seven. And there's an aspect of biogeometry that's called the quality of number. Also, it was discovered later by other researchers that this quality of the spiritual carrier wave could be found in great concentrations around the tombs of the Coptic Christian saints in Egypt because through their constant work of prayer and blessing, they were able to go into direct resonance with this particular energy quality, and it filled their bodies. And so after death, even in their tombs, this energy quality of the spiritual carrier wave would be present, able to be detected, and it would become a place of pilgrimage for people to come for spiritual enlightenment or to be healed of various problems. It also has the effect of what's known as the incorruptible body. 
that the body of the person does not decay after death because of the amount of this energy that is present within their body. The second of these three essential energies has the technical name in Egyptian biogeometry of the higher harmonic of ultraviolet. We're going to talk about the concept of harmonics in just a second. But essentially, this energy is connected to the ultraviolet range of energy in our world, but it's on a higher octave or a higher harmonic than our world. This higher harmonic of ultraviolet, as I mentioned before, if we look at some of the Arabic or Egyptian hieroglyphic terms for this energy, we might refer to it as the spiritual light or as the atmosphere of the angels. It's understood in Egyptian biogeometry that a particular concentration of this energy has to be present for angelic forces to work strongly into the physical plane. In fact, this is one of the secrets of sacred geometry and sacred architecture. If you study the Book of Kings in the Old Testament, there are very precise descriptions, for instance, of the design of the Temple of Solomon. And it says that because of this design, the highest rank of the spiritual angelic hierarchies, known as the seraphim, could actually manifest directly into the space of the Temple of Solomon. And so by giving the correct shape to something in these uh, places of divine architecture, the sacred temple site, you could create a concentration of this energy that they called the spiritual light or the atmosphere of the angels that allowed this type of angelic presence, this angelic visitation to take place. Now, this energy also has an energetic effect on human beings. It has the effect on human beings of creating deep relaxation and also deep revitalization of energy inside the body. I think of it as something like the concept of a deep yin chi in Chinese medicine, a deep revitalizing energy in the core energy of the body. Now, when I learned about this energy from Dr. Karim, and he taught me, just as I teach others today in biogeometry trainings, to be able to directly detect this energy and work with it, I realized I was already aware of this energy, but not within its full context. I had heard pieces about it elsewhere. For instance, one friend of mine is a woman named PMH Atwater, who has done more research into the near-death experience of children than any other researcher. And she told me that the children that she interviewed report commonly uh, two experiences, sometimes only one, sometimes two. And that is that they say that either they saw the white light, and we've all heard about the white light in their near-death experience, or that, and sometimes in addition, they had perceived what they refer to as the dark light. Now this dark light was nothing negative or harmful or frightening. It was simply some type of powerful spiritual energy that appeared as a dark light. And what she said was remarkable to her is that she didn't know what this dark light was, she had no frame of reference for it, but she knew empirically that the children who reported seeing the dark light were the ones that had the highest increases in IQ and psychic function after their near-death experience. Now I also heard about this energy quality and in fact experienced it directly in doing a body of work with a French medical doctor named Samuel Sagan at the Claire Vision School in Australia. And in that school, they used a technique that was an offshoot of the Kriya Yoga techniques taught in the Babaji lineage in the Himalayas. And one thing that we learned was to be able to do a particular practice, a meditation at the third eye center, in which we became aware that there was what they referred to as a dark purple light, which was the background of the spiritual plane, background of the spiritual world, that we could perceive at the third eye center as this dark purple emanation. And so I began to put the pieces together and I understood that Dr. Kareem and the Egyptians knew what this energy was that I had found out from these other sources, but they once again understood the complete context for this energy and had ways to detect the energy and work with it practically. Now the third and final of the three energies is the higher harmonic of gold. That's the technical name for this third quality that's considered in some ways to be the most important and the most profound of the three energies by the Egyptians with whom I have discussed it.